see what we have to do and see what we want to talk about. So we've been talking a lot about Lane Kiffin. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll start with you first, David, because I haven't gotten your take on this. Uh, the way that it has happened within the last 48 hours, do you feel like there's been some type of back and forth between the, between the two coaches as they head into the championship game on Monday? I think something was wrong, obviously, because you, you, you've seen this in the past, Kerry. Thing, believe it or not, for Alabama. Well, no doubt about it. And let's first understand how we got here. I think it's two coaches that needed each other. Lane Kiffin needed Nick Saban to kind of give him a stamp of approval. They coexisted well. I mean, they, they did a for good a little job. While. Wait, so but <laughs> they let's did a good talk job. about the coexisting. There was a point where you say they yeah. need each other. They did. And so, so it got to the point that Nick didn't need him anymore, David? No, it got to the point where... Lane wasn't doing his job well enough. And, and, Lane, and Nick can... ...that's been happening this morning, and that is the fact that the Colts are planning to bring back head coach Chuck Pagano for the 2017 season. It was first reported by the Sporting News and confirmed by ESPN's Adam Schefter. Adam, what's the reasoning behind this? I think for defense, and listen, Chuck Pagano is from the defensive side of the football. This is going to be it. If he survives two, three more years and they become a strong playoff team, it's not going to be because of Andrew Luck. It's going to be because of the defense. Yeah, they take it on that blueprint of the Dallas Cowboys. They got stronger. He's going to tell us how the Giants have the tall task of stocking Aaron Rodgers. That's coming up in just a little bit. Train rolling. We welcome back our five-time Pro Bowl safety, Darren Woodson, and any marks covers the Giants for us as well. Big Blue defense, they've been stingy all year. These numbers are amazing. They're limiting opposing quarterbacks to under 250 passing yards in three of their last four games. And no shade to Dak or Cousins or Wentz, but they ain't Aaron Rodgers. So um, if you, Darren, Darren uh, are the Giants, what's the key for their secondary to stop this duo? Do them? exactly what they've been playing against Aaron Rodgers. It turns into a six, seven count because he extends plays. Yes. That's going to be the question mark this, for the New York Giants. That's when he starts scrambling. And we heard from Giants defensive quarter Steve Spagnuolo yesterday. What stood out to you, Anita, and his comments? Two things stood out. First and foremost, he said that the most important time for his defense is whistle. To Let's talk about the Giants offense. Let's give them a little love as well. They're good in their own right, but we're expecting temperatures to be cold. We're getting anything from four degrees to 15 degrees when this game commences. So in what way, Darren, based on the cold, do you think that the, the run uh, game for the Giants? Spring quarterback making his first start. He's a rookie and he's playing a great defense. The truth is there is some good that you saw against a very good um, Denver Broncos defense yes. just a week ago. You've got to imagine that was a bit of a confidence builder. And they also have a guy named Latavius Murray who has some fresh legs that Listen, they've got to lean Running on. the ball will certainly be his friend. <laughs> that will help him tremendously. Tim's hanging out with us all morning long. We've got a lot more. It's important to Real Madrid to not only match that record, which is what they did, but to break it this week. Well, for the club, they're about winning championships. They're about holding records. But for the fans... It's about getting back. To break it midweek when they travel to Sevilla for their Copa del Rey round of 16 second leg. But some big news on the pitch in England. A lot Hi, to Linda. talk about. Hello. <clears throat> uh, the la you may know this. The last time the Seahawks and Lions faced off was week four yep. last season. Seattle won by three. Russell Wilson sacked six times. So, Merrill, what did the Lions defensive line do to overcome what the Seahawks, you know, offensive line could bring? Right. Misdirection. They were outstanding. And here's a good example of it. And I emphasize the front four. They didn't blitz very much, Linda. When they mm -hmm. did, they had great success. They caused a fumble. You got a touchdown. But these guys predominantly dominate. Why this is a different Seahawks team right now. I mean, if you take it as a whole since the start of the 2013 season, no team has a better record than Seattle in the months of November, mm -hmm. December, and January. They've lost just nine games during that span. But, Merrill, to your point, three of them have come this year. So all that being said, what do the Seahawks need to change 